Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Lionel's new Base 3 that is coming out um, sometime this year. Should be hopefully in the first half of the year here, but um, they recently started releasing some of their documents that go with the Base 3 and uh, it looks pretty exciting. And so I thought we would just do a video of a quick, uh, actually not quick, you know my videos are never quick, but uh, the uh, a video of uh, an overview of sort of the how the base three is going to work with all the different um, uh, engine types and then uh, how I would actually incorporate it into my layout. So we'll look at some of the way my layout is set up and then how I plan to incorporate my layout, which may help you on your layout when you uh, if you decide to get the base three. So yeah, we're just going to take a look at the main uh, installation guide that came out and some of the resources and just talk about it and uh, uh, check it out. So uh, let's get started. All right, so we're going to take a look at the uh, base three user guide that was released. Um, now the revision on this is from July of 23. So my guess is that nothing's really changed since then. And uh, this is probably pretty close to the final, but we'll of course see when it finally comes out. So the base three is due out sometime in the first half of 2024 here so hopefully we'll see it pretty soon and we'll be able to test all this stuff out but let's take a look at it so on the table of contents nicely organized you can jump to the different areas that you need to if you want to find something but the first section that we're going to talk about is the uh, section that introduces the base 3 and the cab 3 app and they just give you a quick description but you know it has a lot of features in it but its main you know probably biggest feature is now we'll be able to control all the different types of engines that Lionel's released over the years with one single either hardware remote or the cab 3 app that's going to be released with the base 3. So that includes TMCC engines, legacy engines, uh, any Lion Chief engines that are Bluetooth only, and also any Lion Chief engines that are radio frequency or RF only. So there's all different types of engines and how they're controlled, and now they'll all come together under one roof with the base three and be able to be controlled by a single either Cab 2 legacy remote, a Cab 1L legacy remote, or the new cab 3 app that will be released with the base 3 so pretty cool now it does have a whole bunch of other features that will be available like built-in Wi-Fi um, four-digit addressing um, it will have memory module support layout control system support and um, be able to be updated uh, through Wi-Fi for firmware updates and things like that. So we'll go through all those in the uh, guide here, but those are some of the main features of the Base 3 and why you might want to get it. So the first thing they talk about is how do you connect the Base 3 to your layout? Well, this has not changed in the way that you connect the Base 3 uh, from the way we connect TMCC modules or um, legacy base modules to the layout. It's the exact same process. So you basically connect one wire from the base three to either your ground or common terminal of your transformer or the outside rail of your track. And whichever way you have it set up today, you don't have to change. You just leave it the way it is. And all you're gonna have to do is if you already have a TMCC or legacy base on your layout, you're just gonna unconnect uh, or disconnect the wire from the base that you have and reconnect it to the new base three and plug in the base three, you're all set. And that's it. So very simple connection. It's the exact same way we've always done it. So no change there. They do make a little bit mention of the layout, a location where you want to put the base three. So on layouts like mine, which are just medium layout, I can put it in the same location I have, it really doesn't matter. For giant layouts, super large layouts, then you might want to put it somewhere near the middle of the layout for best uh, communication strength, but you'll play with it and decide on its best location. As far as powering up the track, the base three has nothing to do with the power on the track. This is not a transformer. It doesn't supply power to the track. Uh, however you do that today would stay the same. So you don't have to make any changes there, either by your transformer or power brick or however you're powering your track today would stay exactly the same. So no changes there. And then they talk about how if you are going to use the current Legacy Cab 2 remote or the Cab 1L remote for that matter, how you connect it with your new Base 3. And it's the exact same way we've always done it between the remote and the base. And that is making sure they're both on the same channel. 
So you can change the channel on your base and your remote, and as long as they match, you're all set. So if you have changed your cab to remote's channel from its default, then you can just change the base three to match that or vice versa. If you've never changed your cab to remote's channel, then my guess is probably the base three is gonna to default to the same channel and you might have to not have to do anything uh, when you set it up and pull it out of the package. So that's kind of cool. But this has not changed from the way we've always done it with TMCC or legacy bases and remotes. They always have to be on the same channel. Of course, if you have more than one railroad in uh, operation, then you wanna make sure that each of the bases are on different channels, right? So if you're doing a base three on one railroad and you're doing this, you're keeping the old legacy base on the other railroad, still you wanna make sure that they're on separate channels. All right, so they just make a little note on that, which is kind of nice. Um, the base communication between um, the uh, remote and the base three will still have the same radio link warning light that shows up on the cab two. That's that little red light above the red dial. So if you're having signal quality issues and things like that, then you'll see that blinking light uh, on your remote also. And they also mention that if you have a bunch of uh, video cameras, wireless cameras in your train room, you might want to check to see what channel they're on and then make the base three at a different channel. So just the standard stuff when you're setting up uh, channels for anything as far as Wi-Fi goes. Now, uh, the base three does have a built-in Wi-Fi module. So today in our railroads, we have to have a separate Wi-Fi module uh, that's part of the layout control system from Lionel. And that module is connected to the system through a cable that comes out of the legacy base and then is split into a cable that goes to the Wi-Fi module and also uh, one that goes to a power supply. That's all eliminated with the base three. This is all gonna be built in and you'll have that uh, Wi-Fi built into the base three. Now, as far as the configuration of the Wi-Fi, that stays the same as the current Wi-Fi module, and you'll have two choices, access point or network. And if you choose access point, well, all that means is that the base three is gonna create its own base three Lionel network, and you would connect to that network with your mobile device or tablet or whatever it is. And if you wanna click the join to network choice, that means that you're gonna connect it to your home network and you'd be able to connect it to your home network. If you have a modern router, it probably has a um, Wi-Fi protected uh, um, secure uh, enable button so that you can um, basically push that button on the base and push the same button on your router and then it will automatically negotiate and connect the two together. If for some reason you either don't have the WPS button or you uh, have to do it manually because it just doesn't work, and WPS doesn't always work all the time. It it's not, has nothing to do with the base three. It has to do with just routers and the devices that are connecting to and things like that. But they do walk you through the, the steps to manually do it if the WPS uh, button doesn't work to connect to your network. Okay. And then they do make a note in here, however, that if you're using it to join to your home network, you gotta make sure that your home network pretty much is you know, operating correctly. So in other words, it, you can get lags and latency to the commands going to your engines if your home network has a lot of traffic and is very slow. And you know, the home networks can be all over the place as far as being set up correctly and if they are really efficient and all that kind of stuff. So if you have a, very congested home network and you have problems with your home network in general you might want to just use access point and uh, then it'll be its own network uh, from the base three you might also want to use access point if say you just use mobile devices in your train room that aren't connected to the internet or maybe they're old iphones or old ipads you use just to control trains well you don't need to be on your home network in that case. You can just use Access Point and uh, it'll be a nice uh, secure, I mean, a nice uh, solid connection to the base three and you don't have to worry about your home network uh, interfering or being in the way. So. so you have those two choices. 
And again, if you pick the Wi-Fi protected setup, the WPS, then um, it should auto join by itself. Okay. If not, they, they walk you through the steps to manually do it. Um, the base three lights they talk about next, which are, there's a whole bunch of lights on the base three. Uh, they've got all kinds of LED lights. Uh, they've got uh, front panel lights. Uh, they've got um, um, all kinds of light bars and things like that on the base three that you're gonna see. And they all mean different things. So it's, it's great that they have all these lights telling you all this information like Wi-Fi activity, uh, legacy activity, Bluetooth activity, RF activity. You've got all these different things that are telling you uh, different things. So when we get the base three and we go over this, we'll see all these lights and, and talk about what all they mean. But uh, they did a really great job on putting all these different types of indicators so you know exactly what's going on, especially if you have to do some troubleshooting. So that's a nice feature. And then they go into talking about programming a Bluetooth only engine into the base three. So as always, everything that we do with legacy or TMCC, that stays the same. The way you program those engines into the base three is the same way you've programmed them into your TMCC or your legacy uh, bases. And that is you put the engine on the track, you slide the program run switch to program on the engine, you power up your track, you grab your remote, you do engine, you select an ID, and then you hit set. And then you switch the switch back to run on your engine, and you're ready to go. That stays the same with the base three. So if you have legacy or TMCC engines, you're going to program the exact same way. But we also have engines, line chief engines especially, that were Bluetooth only engines. They didn't have a legacy radio in them. So on those engines, we're now able to program them also into the base three. Uh, and it's basically the same exact process that you would do for your legacy or TMCC engines, except for the fact that the switch now is not on the engine because it doesn't exist. It's on the base three. And there's a specific switch for Bluetooth programming. And you're going to switch that to the program position. And then you're going to follow the same steps I just talked about. Engine's on the track. It's powered up. You're going to uh, do engine, select an ID, hit the set button, and then you're going to go back to the base three and switch the switch back to run, and you're all done. Simple. Same as we always do. The only difference is that you are reserved to TMCC IDs 10 through 17 for Bluetooth only engines. So they must be one of those IDs. So if you already have an engine on one of those IDs, you're going to have to move it out of those IDs if you want to use it for your Bluetooth engine. Okay, so that's the only restriction on it. You have to be within that range of IDs that they've reserved for Bluetooth only engines. But other than that, everything else is identical and still the same. Uh, one other note about Bluetooth engines is that when you actually do uh, program it in, it will automatically download the engine's road name and number, so that's kind of cool. You don't have to program anything in manually. It'll just pull it down, so uh, that's another great feature. Now, as far as Bluetooth engines after they're programmed, when you have them on the track and you power up your system, if for some reason um, that you wanted to control that engine with its original remote, you have to make sure that you do not power up the base uh, three uh, when you're powering up your track. So what happens is when you power up your system and the base three is powered up, if there are any Bluetooth only engines on the track that you have already programmed into the base three, it will automatically connect. You don't have to address the engine or do anything. It just automatically connects to the engine. And they did that because they didn't want the Bluetooth only engines chirping. So as you know, on the Bluetooth engines, when uh, they're on the track, if they're not linking or communicating with a remote, then they chirp until you turn on the remote and it makes the connection. So they didn't want all these engines chirping, so it was actually a very good uh, thought for them to actually have it automatically connect to any Bluetooth engines on the track that you already programmed into the base three. So once it makes that connection, then nothing else can take that connection away from the engine. So you won't be able to use the little handheld remote that came with the engine. 
Uh, and so if say you have somebody come over and they just want to use the very simple handheld remote that came with the engine and, and not the legacy remote, then what you could do is make sure you power up your track, but do not power up the base three. And then um, what you'll do is turn on your remote and then it will connect by Bluetooth to that engine. Then you can power up the base three because now that it's already connected, the base three can't take it away from the remote. And now you can use the uh, little handheld remote that came with the engine. And also now you can use your Cab2 app or Cab, uh, excuse me, Cab2 remote or the Cab3 app and then control any other engines you want to at the same time. So you just have to do things in a certain order if you want to use the original remote that came with the engine. So just keep that in mind. Uh, they also walk you through some steps on how to clear a Bluetooth engine from the database. So very simple steps there. And also if you um, have an engine that um, you're replacing an ID on, so say you used all the, all the IDs up for the Bluetooth only engines, and you want to add another one, then you would just pick one of the IDs and it'll override it and that'll be the new engine underneath that ID. So you can either remove it or you can just replace it depending what you're trying to do. So pretty easy. And then they go into the section about programming radio frequency line chief engines. So these are the engines that didn't come with a legacy radio. They don't have a Bluetooth radio. They were the first line chiefs that came out and they were radio frequency. So the remote had a special frequency that went with that engine. So because of that, uh, these have never been able to be controlled by anything but the remote itself. And these were the engines that came out when Line Chief first came out in 2014. And for about three years, they had that until they introduced Bluetooth in 2017. So we've got like three catalogs, or you know, if you, t if you figure Lionel does two catalogs a year, six catalogs of Lion Chief engines that are radio frequency. Although if you think about it, there's probably not a lot of them. So it's probably a very small subset of engines. And my guess is most people don't have all these different types of engines. So um, you should be okay as far as being able to program these uh, Lion Chief RF engines into your base three. And the reason I say that is because this has the same restriction as the Bluetooth only engines did where you only can do certain ID ranges for these engines in the base three. So in this particular case, it's ID range two through nine, and that's reserved for radio frequency line chief engines. Uh, and then you have to use one of those IDs. So same process though, there's gonna be a separate switch on the front of the base uh, for RF engines, where you're gonna set it to program. You're gonna do the engine, pick your ID, two through nine, one of those IDs, and press set. And then you're gonna put the switch back to run and you're all set. So super easy to program any of these engines, whether it be a RF only, Bluetooth only, or our standard TMCC or legacy engines. So uh, they made it really easy and uh, so that should work really well. The only restriction is again, on the Bluetooth, you have to be in that certain range and then on the RF ones, uh, that other range and you can only use the IDs within that range, and that's pretty much it. Now, the only thing they didn't mention in the guide, uh, which will be interesting when we get the base three to see if it works, is what if I power up my layout that has an RF engine on it, and we know that the base three is gonna auto connect to it. What happens if I pick up the original remote that came with the engine, which is also radio frequency? Would it just work? Or no, it won't work. So that, that'll be interesting because I'm not sure since it's radio frequency and not Bluetooth, uh, totally different technology, right? That would still work because it's just a radio frequency signal that's gonna be coming out of the remote. And does it actually have to connect to the engine or uh, now that the base three is connected to it, does it ignore the remote? So that's the only question I have on the radio frequency. It doesn't really tell you here, so I don't really know, but I guess we'll find out once we get the base three and we'll give it a test out. So it's either one or the other. And then they walk you through the same steps as far as clearing an RF engine from the database and things like that. All right, so that's pretty much it for programming engines into the base three. It's gonna be very straightforward, simple. So any type of engine you have should work. And then they go into an area where they talk about the layout control system or the LCS system with the base three. 
So the layout control system, if you're not familiar with it, is just a bunch of modules like the sensor tracks, uh, track power blocks, uh, accessory switch controllers, all those things that control everything else on your layout, switches, uh, power blocks, um, accessories, lighting, all that type of stuff. That's all part of the layout control system. And the way the layout control system works today is you have a special cable that plugs in the back of the legacy base and it's split into two. One goes to an outlet uh, for the power supply and then the other side goes to has a cable with a PDI port or connection on it that then plugs into the first module in your LCS system. And depending how many modules you have, they all daisy chain together. So the one, the cable plugs into whichever module you pick first, and then that module has a second port that then takes a cable that goes from that to the next module and to the next and next. And it's like a big long sort of Christmas tree light chain where they're all just connected one right after the other. Um, the problems that we've had with the LCS system is that if you have a lot of modules, they all daisy chain on a single chain today, and that can sometimes can cause problems with power getting to the last module in the chain, depending how many you have, and then also the signal going down to the end of the chain. So. What Lionel did with the base three, which is really nice, is they created three separate ports on the base three that have three separate power supplies for the layout control system. So now I can have three daisy chains instead of one big long one, which cuts them way down so that I make sure that all the modules get the appropriate power and signal to them. So that's really nice uh, because that'll, that'll make the LCS system much more reliable and you won't have uh, some modules that sometimes don't work maybe because they don't have enough power so really really nice. Now uh, the way they set it up is that each port can handle up to 10 modules so that's 30 total for the base but if for some reason you have a big club layout or something like that and you need more they do have additional power supply boards that tap into the daisy chain that you can add on there so but for me uh, I think I don't have any more than 15 modules, so I should be good on mine and everything should be fine now because I can split it into two daisy chains. And then one other thing they added for the LCS system is some um, protection. So they uh, added a monitor that, status, that uh, monitors the status of the line. If it sees a short, it'll remove the power from that PDI port so it doesn't damage the base three or the LCS module. So that's kind of cool too. And then it'll give you a light on the side to tell you there's a problem. All right, and then they talk about the memory modules. I told you before that the base three was be backwards compatible with all the memory modules. So you'll be able to use the older legacy orange modules we've always had with the engines to load engine information for the older engines that didn't have a IR sensor on the bottom and, and you don't have a sensor track to read it. You can still use the original orange memory modules. Uh, you can also use the black uh, writable memory modules. So they're gonna include one with the uh, base three, which is really nice. And you're going to be able to transfer then your base 2's engine data over to your base 3 so you don't have to recreate everything all over again. And you can also use it for backing up and restoring your database. So I do that all the time. I back up my um, legacy base's database. Uh, so in case anything happens and I have to restore it, I'll have a copy of it. And then um, you can also use it if you need to make a black memory module to update your CAB2 remote. So in the future, if you're using the legacy CAB2 remote with the base three, uh, when the base three gets a firmware update, there's a possibility you might need a CAB2 remote update. So it'll have that memory module so you can do that also. And you can also then create engine specific memory modules also. So if you're using the system uh, utility, the Lionel system utility. So, it's got full memory module support, which is really nice that they didn't eliminate that. And, uh, you know, it's all backwards compatible. So that's, that's really, really nice. 
And that's pretty much the end of what they call the quick start user guide right now for the base three that they released. Now they do have a website out there that you can go to that has all kinds of videos to show you how to do all this type of stuff. So, but I'm going to be honest with you. Um, if you got this guide right here, um, it has everything you need in it to load all your engines into the base three. I don't think anybody should have any problems, uh, using this new base three. It, it's, uh, they've made it as simple as possible, and it looks, uh, it looks pretty good based on what we're seeing so far. So that is the current quick uh, start guide that we got for the base three from Lionel. Um, it might have some small changes when we get the final uh, release of the base, but for now it looks like it's pretty close to uh, what we're gonna see when the base three is actually released. All right, so on my layout, my main control for Lionel engines is the this Cab 2 uh, system, right? So I've got the Cab 2 remote here, and I've got the 990 Legacy base. Again, a single wire comes off of this and goes, in this case, it goes to my ZWL transformer, but it could also just go to the track, right? It's just uh, that one connection. It'll be the exact same th thing for the base 3. So I could take this out, put the base 3 right here, hook up the same wire and then plug it in and I'm ready to go. And I can use this remote with the base three still. So I do love my legacy remote and I could still use this. Or I could use a Cab 1L legacy remote. So if you have uh, one of these remotes, the simpler type without the display, this will also work with the base three. Now, we all know that the Cab 2 has been discontinued a long time now, and these units are going for ridiculous prices, you know, a thousand plus, right? And although these are great remotes, um, if you don't have one and you still want a hardware remote, you don't want to use the app to control your trains, you can get one of these Cab 1Ls. Lionel is still making this remote. It's the only remote they're still making. And obviously, because it's much simpler, it doesn't have the display and all those components that are obsolete now, so it has just buttons on it. And you can get these today. Uh, they have, they're out already. So they released this prior to the Base 3's release. Um, I will say that Lionel makes these things in batches, as we all know. So, if you are planning to get the base 3 and you do want a hardware remote like this and you don't have the 990 and you don't want to pay a fortune for it, I would suggest you buy one of these now because they probably will sell out and we'll have to wait for the next batch to come in. And these are readily available right now at most of the dealers. Some are actually sold out already. but. Uh, you may want to grab one of these so you have it ready to go when the base 3 comes in if you want a, an actual physical remote to hold in your hand and you don't have the cab 2 one here so just keep that in mind they are going to continue to make them so it's not like they're discontinued it's just that they come in batches so once the dealers sell out you have to wait for the next batch to come in from line M L, and sometimes that can be a year or more so uh, you just want to make sure you're all set so um, that's what we're going to replace as far as that goes. Now, on my base here, there's a cable that comes out the back here that goes to the LCS system. And that's the one that splits into two. One goes to a plug to power it up. And the other one is a PDI cable that goes down to my modules. In the traditional um, L uh, LCS system, this is what it looks like. I have an extra one of these because I bought it just as a backup. But basically, it has this cable here, a serial cable that plugs in the back of your legacy base. And then it has uh, a connection on it right here, it has the little PDI cable connection. And it also has a power supply connection. And then this power supply just plugs into that. So this little PDI connection then plugs into your first module that you have on your layout. And that module could be anything. It could be one of these modules that you're seeing here, or it could be a sensor track up on your uh, layout. It doesn't matter what module it is. But if you notice, the little PDI cables go into the module and they come out and then they go to the next module and then they go to the next module. And it's a big giant daisy chain depending how many modules you have on your layout. So right here you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five. There's six modules here. There's five 
um, accessory controllers and one Wi-Fi module. This is the Wi-Fi module right here which connects to my network. And that's what I would use for the Bluetooth app. And also, it's also what I use to connect the uh, system update utility, and I mean the, um, the, the Lionel uh, system utility um, that you can use to uh, connect to the system and then actually manually program in names and, and things like that. So this module right here, I will take out of the mix because I don't need it once I get the base three because this will be built into the base three, which means I also don't need this cable and this power supply. These will be eliminated too. And what will happen is these daisy chains that you see right here will just plug in at the top up to my uh, base three at that point okay so probably what I'll do is I've got like you know these one two three four five modules right here will go into one port and then um, I don't know I'd have to count up I gotta count up how many sensor tracks I actually have but I may have to split the sensor tracks into two separate uh, daisy chains depending because it is it sounded like from the instructions that you can only have 10 per port. All right. Now that could be a little bit of a problem if you have your uh, sensor tracks all over your layout. You have more than 10 and you, you didn't cut a hole in the bottom of your platform so that you can disconnect them without pulling up the track. That, so some, some, some uh, layouts could have a problem if you didn't think ahead like that. So what I did is when I put my sensor tracks down on my layout, I actually cut a big hole right underneath the sensor track so that I could connect and disconnect the cables if I needed to in the future because if they the problem with the is that because they're in a daisy chain if you act if it falls off or disconnects accidentally underneath the track you lose everything after that all the modules after that stop working because they no longer have a power or signal so I I found that the connections with the PDI cables were not the greatest and so I decided that I would cut a hole under every single sensor track in my layout through the plywood so that I could actually reach up there and connect and disconnect a PDI cable if I ever needed to and uh, didn't have to pull up the track since I was ballasting it and all that kind of stuff but if you've already done that and it's too late uh, then uh, uh, you may have to find a way to cut a hole from the bottom of your layout up to get to it so that you can um, disconnect it and reset them so you only have 10 per daisy chain. So that's something that uh, some people may run into, but I think on mine, uh, I don't think I have more than 10 sensor tracks, so I think I'm going to be okay on my particular setup. All right, so you can see on my layout I have the, the Cab 2 uh, remote that I use for all my legacy engines and any TMCCs and then I also have some Lion Chief remotes going along here and there's some over on the other side here also for these different sets that I have right and some of these sets are Bluetooth uh, and then another, some of them are radio frequency because they're older sets so I have all these individual remotes that I have to use right now to control those engines if I like the physical remotes and I don't want to use the Lion Chief app on the Bluetooth ones but now, when I get the base 3 and I switch out this space for the base 3, this remote right here will be able to control all of them. I don't have to use these individual ones anymore for the engines. As long as I program the RF ones in that range and the Bluetooth ones only, the ones that have only Bluetooth in that same range, then I'll be good. Now, all my Lion Chief uh, sets that I have are Bluetooth or RF. There's no ones, I don't have the uh, Lion Chief Plus 2.0s. Those don't come in the Lion Chief uh, ready to run sets. So these are all strictly either RF or Bluetooth and those will now program into the base 3 and I'll be able to control them with my legacy remote. So there won't be any difference than me controlling a le regular legacy engine or um, a TMCC engine with those other ones that is like really really a big deal right no longer do I have to worry about uh, picking up one of these remotes 
to control those engines, they they will all be inside my cab too. Again, the only caveat is if I already have a legacy or TMCC engine programmed to one of those IDs, I will have to switch it out to something else. So I'll have to play with the IDs uh, and switch them around, but you know, I'm gonna be able to do that. Now, right now, I only have like one, two, three, I only have four uh, Lion Chief sets. So it's not a big deal. That's not to say that I won't buy more in the future because when Lionel comes out with some of these theme sets, they're super cool and I, I do like them. So in that particular case, they, I may have a couple more. But right now, I've only got four. So for me, the base three works perfectly, right? And I'm gonna be able to do what I, whatever I need to do uh, for those particular engines. So that is a, a great improvement for me. The other thing is, um, you know, I'll be able to basically put the base three somewhere right here, hopefully. Uh, and then um, it'll have improved communication and everything else. So it's a win-win. All right, so you can see how easy it's gonna be for me to swap this out. Now, of course, I will download my uh, engine roster out of my base two and I'll load it into the base three. Uh, so we'll be good there. I'll have everything transferred over. As you saw in that, um, the user guide, we talked about that feature. And then I'll be able to immediately start using my Cab2 remote. Now, this base also charges my Cab2 remote. So even though I'm not going to be using it for the legacy signal coming out of it anymore, I still want to keep it. So I'm going to move this base probably over to the left here and keep it plugged in. However, even though I am not connecting the wire from this base anymore to the track, or in my tr the transformer in my case, um, I still want to change its channel from uh, what I'm using between this and the, the when the new uh, base three comes here. The reason is is because even though this is not connected to the track, this is still outputting a signal. And you could still, even if I take the antenna off here, there's still a signal coming out of here, and you could still have cross communication and interference. Uh, so uh, you want to keep that in mind that. You're gonna, you know, for those of us keeping the base because we want to use it as a charging cradle, that you're gonna want to change the channel on it so it's not the same channel as your base three, and then that way you won't have any communication errors. I think that's going to be another thing that trips people up. They're probably going to take their legacy base and move it to the side. They're not going to think about changing the channel, and if you've never changed the channel on your uh, cab two base 990 base right and then you get your new base 3 my guess is they're probably going to be on the same channel right because I, I forget what it defaulted to but if it defaults to channel 1 here from the factory it's probably going to do the same thing on the base 3 and you'll both be on channel 1 and you won't realize you're creating you're the possibility you're creating a problem right it depends how far away your your base your chart you, that you move this to is going to be away from your base three. If you put them right next to each other, then you're probably really going to have an issue. Um, but if you move the cab two over someplace far away, just for charging purposes, then you may not have an issue, right? Since it's not connected to the track and you take the antenna off of it. But remember, it still outputs a signal. So there's a possibility you could still have some interference. So you want to make sure you, I would just change the channel no matter what to something else if you're gonna to continue to use it uh, as a charging base. Now on my layout right here, I only have a very <coughs> short control panel here. It's not that, not that big. So even if I move the base over here next to the other base, right, I am going to um, probably run into possibility of signal issues, so I definitely will change the channel. Because I actually have two legacy bases. As you can see, I have another one over here. This is for uh, like if somebody else comes over, they can run legacy trains at the same time I am using two different remotes. So the remotes are on the same uh, channel, uh, but this base is actually on a separate channel. So it doesn't interfere with my other base over there. Cause this is actually not a, uh, 
it's not a 993 with just the charging base. This is actually another full legacy base right here. I just don't have the antenna on it, and it's not connected to the track. But the base itself is actually set to a different channel. So just to make sure it doesn't interfere, and you're going to want to do the same thing when you get your, uh, your base 3. Now we talked about before if you had uh, MTH, uh, the MTH DCS system linked up with your legacy or TMCC system uh, that you'd still be able to do the same thing and you will be able to do the same thing. The difference will be is uh, if you have it set up that way today, you probably have a cable coming out of your base, your Lionel base. It's a special cable that connects with your uh, DCS TIU. Well, you won't have that anymore, right? There'd be, there's not going to be a cable coming out of your, that big thick ca uh, cable that splits into two coming out of your base three. What you're going to have instead is you're going to connect a LCS module, the SER or serial port module, from your base three. So you, you'll get one of those little PDI cables, you connect it to one of the PDI ports, and then you'll connect a serial module that serial module will then connect to your TIU. So you'll have to buy one uh, extra module and cable in order to get that connection between your base three and your TIU, but otherwise it'll be the same. You're getting the same signal and connection through it and you'll be able to control your Lionel engines through your uh, DCS system. Hey guys, well that's gonna be it for a quick overview I think for now, but the uh, you can see that when I do get the base three, it should be a fairly simple swap out, some, some uh, transferring of my uh, engine files, and um, also I'm gonna have to uh, just make sure my daisy chains for my LCS system are no more than 10 modules each on each port. But other than that, uh, I should be able to get that up and running in a day. So uh, I can't wait to see the base three come out and uh, check it out and see all the functions. Now, of course, I haven't gone through the Cab 3 app, which isn't released yet. But when the Cab 3 app actually comes out, on that single app, you're also going to be able to control all your different types of engines. So just like you will on the hardware remote here, on the Cab3 app, you'll be able to control the RF engines, the Bluetooth engines, the TMCC engines, and the legacy engines all in the single app. And the app will have all the features in it, uh, just like it does on the legacy system and everything for legacy engines. So um, I'm excited to see the app. It, I, I saw a preview of it. It looked pretty good. And, um, you know, sometimes the apps can be even better to, uh, to work with. So that will be a whole separate type of training once we get to that point and the app's released and we can actually uh, start using it and all the features and functionality of it. But uh, today we're just talking about setting up the base three and the basic um, remote options that you're going to have. So, All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for our quick introduction of the base three uh, functionality sort of setup as released uh, with the information we have today. So, of course, we'll find out if that will be the final version, but I, I think they did mention that uh, this is pretty close to what it's going to be, so it, it's probably minute changes anything when it actually comes out, right? So, um, but I hope it helps you understand the base 3 and what it can do and control. Looks like a pretty exciting module. I can't wait to get it on my layout. And then um, all the different options you're going to have in uh, being able to use it. And then, of course, there's going to be different setups. Now, on my layout, I use just the uh, DCS system by itself or the uh, legacy system by itself. I don't intermix the two. So, in other words, I don't have the two running simultaneously on my layout. Some people do do that. They have the uh, Lionel engines being controlled through their MTH uh, system. So, that's still doable with the base three you can still do all that stuff there is a little bit of a setup difference and you have to buy an extra module but besides that it should still all work the same way so um should be no problem with any of that so uh the base three hopefully is an improved module better uh signal communication and it has all these extra features so i think it's going to be uh, great when it finally comes out so i can't wait for it and of course when it does come out, we'll uh, show you how I'm going to set it up on my layout and we'll do all the uh, this video on uh, setting it up, getting it functioning and running all my different engines. So can't wait for that one. 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and was uh, gave you some information. As always, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and put your comments down below about this video. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.